day 19. You've had your fill of while loops. While true seem to be the easiest ones to make, but really, they're for situations where you don't know how often something's going to repeat. What if you do know how much you want something to repeat? Let's look at a for loop, which does that for us. A for loop is a brilliant kind of loop. If we have an idea about how many times we want it to repeat, then we can use a for loop to loop code in exactly the same way that a while loop did, except we can get the setup of the variable, the control condition, and the increment set up within one line of code. Yes, these kinds of loops are for those of us that like efficiency. <laughs> or those of us that are a bit lazy, but a for loop, regardless, is the way forward if you roughly know how many times you want to count something. So here's that while loop that we wrote a few lessons ago, and all it's doing is counting from the number zero and stopping at the number nine, displaying all those values on the screen for us. Let's look at why a for loop is better. These two lines do exactly the same thing. Let's see. Boom. Not only is it shorter, but it has a bunch of secret tricks up its sleeve that help us loop and create variables. The way it's working is really straightforward. The for command, the first thing after it, is the name of a new variable that we're going to create. In this case, a variable called counter. Then the in command tells it what set of data to make that variable equals to. In our case, we're going to use a range function. A range function, if you only give it one number, will start at zero and move to a state where the number is less than the number you've put in the brackets. So in this case, it's going to count from zero to nine. Now, the for loop has done all the heavy lifting for us. Every time the line of code or lines of code are executed and it returns to the top, we increment the variable value the for loop has created. Now, there is one little thing we need to think about with this, though, is that variable we've created is only really supposed to be there during the loop. So if I tried to print out counter after that, I may have a bad time. Now, commonly, computer programmers use the variable names i, j, and k when they're using for loops for counting. There's no real reason for this other than everyone's always done it. So if you see example code with for i in range, the variable's just called i. Now, that's great, but I prefer variables with a bit of meaning. Your mileage may differ. If you want to use i, j, and k, you're more than welcome to. Common errors you might see. Here's an example program that is going to add together all the numbers from 0 to 99 and continually print out the total. Can you see what's wrong with it? Let's run it and see. Now it looks all right, but it's claiming that the 100 is invalid syntax, which probably means we've written something wrong. So what have we done wrong? We've missed the brackets again. The brackets are really important on the range function because it is a function. And just like the exit function we looked at a few lessons ago, it needs brackets to work. In this case, what range is actually doing is creating a list of numbers between zero and the number that we put into the brackets. If we don't have brackets, the range function doesn't have anything to create the list with, so won't work. If we run it now, it adds up the cumulative total of all the values zero to 99. Here's another really common error as well, and I don't really know why this happens a lot, but in this program, it should be printing out day numbers 0 to 6. But it's not working. It's saying day is not defined. Pause the video and see if you can work out why. Yes, that's right. The variable name is just wrong inside the code. For some reason, this is a very common error. When you create a variable with a for loop, in this case days, if you want to refer to it, you have to spell it and refer to it in exactly the same way. Now it should work perfectly. Many people might say day zero isn't a thing, so we can even do this. Add one directly to day in the print command, and then we get what we want. Here's some of my code that I've broken 
See if you can debug it for me. Please. Pretty please. Your challenge. Let's do some math that might be quite practical. Now, a common thing that people do is borrow money. Money is repaid with interest. Interest is worked out annually. You are going to work out how much money I'll be paying back if I borrow $1,000 over 10 years at an APR of 5%. Now, what that means is that every year, the amount of money I owe will increase by 5%. I'd like you to go and work out how much I owe altogether over the course of 10 years using only a for loop and one or two lines of looped code. If you need a hint to get started, make sure the for loop happens 10 times and do start your value for the amount you're borrowing before the loop. Just remember that a computer would represent 5% as 0.05. When you're done, share your code with the hashtag replit 100 days of code and publish it to our community for other people to see your amazing work. Day 20 tomorrow, we're going to look at the intricacies of the range function because for loops are a lot more than just counting up in ones.